Welcome to The Raps Are Off, ahead of BKB 37 at the Hangar in Wolverhampton. And away from the fighters, we're going to talk now to our cut woman. It's Sammy Morris. Hey. Sammy, <laughs> good to see you. Hey, um, shake my hand. Yeah, do I have to? <laughs> well, you know, fire down royalty. <laughs> um, are you ready for the action? Because most fighters prepare for this. You can't prepare really for anything because you don't know what's going to happen. No, no, 100%. That's why I always say, you know, like um, I always try to explain, you know, someone says, you're a cut woman, what do you do? You just put a towel on somebody's face and it's like, Right, let's go. I, I can't prepare, but 10 years now, I am nearly ready for anything. After George yeah. Hilliard the yeah. other night, uh, I think I could deal with any cut in BKB, to be honest. But yeah, like a preparation to speak up. So, uh, you know, I've got to make sure everything's sterile. Yeah. I've got to make the towel, make sure the towels are there, the waters and, you know, get the hands wrapped and everything. You know, that's probably the most important bit apart from their fight is getting them prepared, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, when they're in the chair having the hand wrapped and stuff, you know, like just calming them down and yeah. having a nice little conversation with them. We don't talk about fighting, talk just about chat. Yeah, and it, it like calms them down. So that's like another step in the preparation for it. And uh, yeah, but I'm I'm ready for anything. You know me now. I've uh, and they've got to sign. You sign all the wraps and everything, yeah, so they yeah, can't all be the messed wraps with. Are signed off, so it's an even playing field. They all use the same amount of tape, same amount of gauze. Mm. There's no messing about. And obviously now I've brought Martin in, I've nice the cut yeah. man, uh, cut man Peps. He's in as my second. So yeah, we're uh, obviously he still wraps his hands, but they still come to me for signing off so I can check them. Um, yeah, and we're, we're so, ready, we're ready. So you've just slightly mentioned there the George Hilliard cut. Tell us a little bit about that because you, I think you said it was the worst you'd ever dealt with. Oh my God, it was like unbelievable. Like I, I don't think I've ever had a moment apart from, you know, like the early days when you, you, you're first progressing from like amateur shows to the professional yeah. and you you see a bit of blood or you see a few cuts or whatever. And when you get into bit, the, the, like when it was, when I first started off, I was like, oh my God, shit is a cut. Oh God. You know, but still kept my composure and stuff. And I haven't had a moment or a feeling like that when George... I seen the cut on George and I thought, oh, my God. Because it was bleeding, I couldn't actually see the severity of it. And I was like, right, get prepared, get prepared. So I had everything prepared. I had extra gauze. I had extra swabs. I just had everything ready. And he come back to the corner and I dabbed the cut and I pulled the towel away and I was like twitchy bum moment. I thought, oh, my God. Like, because I never want a fighter to lose on a cut because no. it's my responsibility. Mm. You know, it's my responsibility to keep them in there. It's their responsibility, George Hilliard, to protect your face, as I keep telling you. But, you know, I'm only messing. He loves me, really. Um, yeah, so I was like, oh, dear, you know, this, this is bad. And then the, I managed to get him through the second round, and then the doctor came over on the third, and the, obviously the cut had opened up a bit more. And I looked at it, and the doctor looked at it, and I thought, yeah, that's, it's game over now. And the doctor looked at me, he's like, do you want to work it, Sam? So he says, I'll give you 30 seconds. Right, okay, so then obviously did what I did, my magic. And I managed to uh, actually, like, knit it back with Vaseline and to, like, hold it together. Yeah. And then Vaseline it over the top so it was completely sealed. And then I just remember saying to George, protect that cut. Yeah. Because if you get hit in that again, it, yeah. I'm pulling you. I said to him myself, I will throw the towel in because it's plastic, plastic surgery business if you get hit in that again. Because it was big and it was wide and it was down to the bone. But, um, well, we got him through it, didn't we? But, but yeah, it, that was, it was the But when you have a cut, cut like that... What's the after effects? Because is it likely to open with another shot on on the cut in, in his next fight? A hundred percent. So like, what's the answer? Stop fighting if you don't want to get cut. You know, or protect yourself better. Because once you get opened up once, that skin and, you know, everything behind it is always going to be supple now. And it will always be, you know, like if you break your leg, you've always got that chance of going over and breaking your leg again. Mm. You know, so it's always the same with a cut. And you always see, and I always know, you know, like if somebody's watched somebody's fights, I'll, and you can hear their corner going, go for where he was cut last yeah. time. Because they just know, you know, like, it's like a plate. It's broken. It doesn't matter how many stitches or whatever. You yeah. can't put that plate back together as, exactly as it was. It's the same as your face. It, when, do, when, it, we, when was your first show? For BKB or for Bare Knuckle in for general? Bare Knuckle. 2014 in Raging Bull in Leicester with J1. Was that for Joe and Jim? No, no, that was for J1. First one for the BKB TM organisation. Oh, my God, 2015, yeah. somewhere Wales, I think it was, because I worked, obviously, for two shows before mm -hmm. that. And then, yeah, they, Joe and Jim were like, yeah, we're having a... And then they, they got me, and I've been here ever since. So it's nine years this year. 
Exactly. So, so what's been the biggest problem? What do you mean? Your biggest problem that you faced? When I first started out, sexism. Believe it or not, I had men that wouldn't let me wrap their hands because I was a girl. Really? And, they, and yeah, and a lot of the old school fighters didn't want women watching them fighting. So it was very, very hard. And I was lucky that Jay Wan gave me a chance. He was quite a respected mm. man. Um, and he said, no, listen, she's, I'm training her up. I'm doing this. I've given her an opportunity. She's keen. She wants to learn. And yeah, in the end, you know, like I think it's the same with anything when somebody new comes in, isn't it? You, you don't know them. You don't know. Yeah. They don't know how to what you like or how your hands are wrapped or whatever. But I think just got, you know, one of them, I just got part of the family then in, in like all the organisations I've worked with. But um, yeah, it was it was very very hard, Tom, at the beginning. It was but not a problem now though. Oh, 100 percent not. They don't want the men wrapping their hands now. They want <laughs> Sam, innit? <laughs> I was so at a show the other night actually, and um, I was late because we was involved in a crash on the motorway. And I got there and somebody had gone and wrapped all the fighters' hands, and uh, they all saw me and it was like, oh, Sam. So they was all queuing up, so I had to cut all the hand wraps off and do all the hand wraps again. And uh, yeah, just it, it's nice, you know, like the people know that they want their hands wrapped by me and I know they know that I do a good job and I, I you know, because I only have to fight as interesting. I don't do this yeah. for fame. I don't do it for ego or glory. I do it to look after the fighters. And of course you do a lot of shows, glove shows and all sorts of shows. Yeah. Um, is it, is it the only thing you do now? Yeah. yeah. Raps? Yeah. Raps and cuts. That's, that's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's taken 10 years. Like, Apart it's, from it's... fishing. Oh yeah, fishing. Yeah, gotta love fishing. Yeah, no, I do. Oh, yeah, I do a lot of fishing. Like I say, I'm uh, ambassador for a, a bait company and stuff, so yeah. I'm always out on the bank fishing and things like that. But yeah, this is this is my job. This is my passion. This is my life. It's known as Sammy Cuts, Sammy Morris. She's the cut woman for BKB. The fighters love her to death as well. She'll be there at the BKB 37 tomorrow. Don't forget to check it out. It's sold out, so you can't get a ticket. But what you can do is watch it. BKB dot. TV, okay, BKB, watch World it there, world.tv, exactly. <laughs> in fact, in fact, you can get your BKB pass as well. Oh, yeah, fight uh, pass. Fight you pass, it. you can get your fight pass for the whole year yeah. or you can do it fight by fight. Monthly, pay it monthly. It, yeah, yeah, pay it yeah. monthly yeah. or yeah, do one it. fight only. Yeah. So it's up to you, but whatever you do, check it all out, okay? It's BKB 37, live from the Hangry in Wolverhampton.